I've experienced many odd and unexplainable events in my life, but this event has been on my mind for a few years, and I finally wish to share it, and pray I'm not the only one who's experienced something like this. I graduated high school in 2019, and was promoted to supervisor for a kitchen in a nursing home down the street. Since I oversaw dinner, I didn't start work until about 3pm, and would get home around 10. So for the first half of the day, I would be completely home alone. I enjoyed that time. Solitude was always nice, especially when you're as introverted as I am. Normally I would sleep in until about noon, but this time I decided to relax on the couch in our main living room and watch kitchen nightmares. I remember nodding off and falling into a light sleep, so any small noise would wake me up. The first few times I cracked my eyes open it would just be from the cats jumping on me. So when I felt the cushion by my feet dip a bit, I figured it was my cat, Peach. After a moment, I opened my eyes and realized my younger sister was sitting at the end of the couch, her back to me. I was half asleep, so I really didn't think much of it. I figured she just stayed home from school sick. So I just asked her if she could move her head so that I could see the TV, but she ignored me still facing the TV screen. Annoyed, I asked her why she was home. Once again, she remained silent, coming to the conclusion that she was just being rude. Again, I closed my eyes and fell back asleep. After about another hour, I got up and started to get ready for work and noticed my sister wasn't in the room or in the house. Concerned, I called her after trying to call her for a few minutes and getting nothing, I called my mother. She picked up, and I asked her if my sister told her where she was going to be. My mother, confused, asked me what I was talking about. She had dropped my sister off at school before going to work. My sister had been at school this whole time. In shock, I hung up and kept this to myself, convinced I was losing my mind that it was all in my head. But I remember that moment so vividly. What my sister was wearing, how she was sitting, how I felt a shift in the couch when she sat down. This wasn't a dream. It had to be real. There was something in my house with me that morning, and it was not my sister. I kept this next experience to myself. As a kid, I had what my parents called a very active imagination always seeing and hearing things and being easily spooked. So I think it got to a point where I just convinced myself this whole experience didn't happen and that there was some kind of rational explanation. It actually took me a few years to tell my little sister about this. Once again, mostly out of fear of being perceived as crazy and I didn't want to spook my sister, but something she said to me changed that real fast. This takes place in September of 2022. My sister and I were waiting in line for a ride at a local amusement park. Every year, my dad's workplace would rent the whole park for employees and their families. We spent most of the day together as a family, but about an hour before closing, my sister and I went to the back of the park to ride some night rides, so it was just the two of us, and the waiting was getting terribly boring. My sister and I aren't very close and don't have that much in common, so we struggled to have a conversation and for the most part stood in silence. But out of the blue, she spoke up. Cat, want to hear something freaky? As a lover of all things spooky, that caught my attention, so I immediately replied with an eager, yeah? And part of me wishes I'd said no. My sister is a night owl and over the summer would stay up until 6 a.m. I had just started working a different job after quitting my nursing home position. That's another scary story for a different day. So I was starting to go to bed at midnight every night and would be up at 10 a.m. She would be the only one awake. One night, she noticed light coming from the crack in her bedroom and she heard both my voice and our mother's voice talking. Only it was hard to understand as if we were either speaking too quickly or just complete gibberish. 
She quickly grabbed her phone, checking the time, and her confusion only grew when she noticed it was 3am. What were we doing awake? Sometimes my mum and I would go to the front window if the weather was bad during the night to keep an eye on the storm, or if there were sirens. We both have a habit of being very nosy. So she figured that's what was going on. A few minutes later, she could still hear the voices and see the lights growing curious. She got out of bed and opened her bedroom door and rushed into the hall, expecting to see me and my mother by the window talking. Only, that's not what she saw. There were no lights on. It was completely dark beside the illumination from her phone screen, and there was no one in sight. Not our mother, not me. Not even the cats were out there. Unsettled and confused, she turned to my bedroom door thinking I was messing with her. She opened my door, and I was asleep with both cats. She goes back in the hall. Mum and Dad's bedroom door is also shut. She peeks in there, and both are sleeping. Now my sister is a rational person. She was always the one to go in the basement first, tell the others that monsters and ghosts aren't real. So she completely pushed this event out of her mind because in her eyes it wasn't a big deal. Maybe she was just overtired, or our grandfather's TV downstairs was a bit loud and that's what she heard. But like my own experience, this kind of sat in the back of her head, and the house grew to be a little less comfortable. She mentioned how after she felt like this, there was always someone watching, as if they were tucked in a corner just observing her. She wasn't scared out of her mind, just a bit confused. When she told me that, a pit in my stomach opened up and I had chills. I laughed at first because, come on, we're in public and I didn't want to flip out. So we went on the ride and for the remaining time at the park, we pushed that conversation on the back burner. On our way home to meet up with our parents, we started talking about it again. And I finally told her about what happened to me. How I saw her at home that day, spoke to her and could remember what she wore. That was the first time I saw her get scared. I wasn't home, she kept saying. What do you think it was then? We still don't know. We don't know if we want to know. The only thing we know for sure is there is something in our house. I work as an EMT for an ambulance company. EMS has always been full of superstitions, and most of us believe in the supernatural on account of all the crazy gruesome stuff we get to see on any given shift. Every company, every EMT, every firefighter has a story about a station that is haunted or something that happened to them that can only be explained as paranormal. For the company I work at, we have about five stations, each with their own stories. Only one or two truly scary stories though. Mostly things like employees seeing shadows out of the corner of their eyes, getting uneasy feelings in the stations, or hearing an unexplained knock, voice, or being hissed or growled at occasionally. This station I worked at was no different. The station I work at is our main station, meaning that is where we keep all of our extra resupply. So it's not uncommon for various crews to be going in and out of the station at all hours of the day. It was common knowledge that the ambulance bay was creepy at night, and people reported hearing voices, footsteps, or ambulance doors opening and closing out of the garage. Now I've worked at this station for two years, and I've heard these things, but it's always been easy to dismiss this, as my partner doing something out in the bay, or another crew doing some late night resupply. The only experience I've had there that I couldn't explain was that I was distinctly growled at in the garage late at night. At the time, I quickly realized that the only person in the bay was me, and I certainly didn't growl at myself and quickly left. That was all I ever experienced there, and for the most part felt very comfortable at that station, until last night. This station is small and consists of a living room with a kitchenette attached to a hallway. 
This hallway led to the garage on one side, the bathroom on the other, and at the end of the hallway is a door leading to the junior's bedroom, which you can then walk through to get to the senior's bedroom. If you go into the garage, there's a staircase that leads into the attack that stretches above the entire living quarters of the station. Me, Junior, and my partner, Senior, are dead asleep in our respective bedrooms, all the doors closed, when I'm awoken to all these loud banging noises and the walls shaking. I realize that this banging isn't just banging, but actually running. Something heavy, huge, and fast is stomping and running around in the attack upstairs. It's stomping and running so loud it is quite literally shaking the walls. Whatever it was must have been huge to be making sounds this loud. Then it gets faster. It's so fast and loud it's running across the entire length of the attack. It is moving faster than anything can move. This stomping is happening one right after another. It almost sounded like there were 10 people up there or a creature with too many legs running right above my head. It's so fast, it's too fast. I'm sitting upright in bed now, huddled in the corner of the bedroom, absolutely horrified. I get this deep, visceral, primal feeling of dread, almost like what prey feels like when they're being hunted. And suddenly, it's as if a thought from somewhere else is placed into my mind. And I just know, with every fiber of my being, that it knows that I'm awake, and that it knows I know it's there. Like a sick, twisted version of that Spider-Man meme. In between the stomping and running, I can hear barking, whirring sounds. It's hard to describe, like a grunt mixed with the sound of the wind. It's making the sound as it runs. I realize that it's moving so fast I can hear the wind it's creating swooshing and whipping around as it grunts and runs. So now, I very silently get up and I walk over to the senior bedroom and try to open the door, but it's been locked. I feel as though I can't make a noise or it will come through the station and kill me. I'm quietly knocking on the door. I'm crying, pleading for my partner to let me in. I'm thinking this is so loud, there's no way she's asleep, but she is. She's out cold and I don't get a response. I decide that my partner had the right idea and I crept over to the junior bedroom separating from my bedroom from the hallway that leads to the garage and the rest of the station and lock the door. So I silently creep back over to my corner of the bed and with my blankets begin to text her. It's 1.45 and I'm begging her to wake up over text and describing what I'm hearing. She's not answering, so I text her fiance and ask him to call her and wake her up, but he's not answering either. It's at this point I decide to text my mum. As I'm sitting there, I get a familiar feeling to before, an intense dread, a stark realization of pure truth. It doesn't even feel like my own thought, more like a piece of truth was just slipped to me by the universe. The thing upstairs isn't human. I'm explaining to my mum what I'm hearing, all these loud switching wind sounds and stomping and running. Then I hear it run down the stairs. When I tell you my heart stopped and my soul left my body. When I heard it coming down the stairs, my stomach dropped to my ass and I was nauseous. I genuinely thought I was going to die. I was waiting for it to start pounding on the door, and I have never been more thankful in my life because I thought to have locked it earlier. I was waiting for screaming or the door to start shaking or something, but it never came. It ran impossibly fast and headed back up the stairs. Down the stairs, up the stairs, across the attack, down the attack above my head in circles, down the stairs, up the stairs, all over. Now. I am absolutely hysterical on the phone with my mum. No one ever prepared me for dealing with being haunted or taunted by an entity. My mum is trying to calm me down. She asks, what do you want me to do? I didn't know. I don't know what she can do. I don't know what to do. I just whisper, I don't know what to do. Just please don't hang up. 
She tells me to bang on my partner's door to wake her up and I do. My partner wakes up and hears the rustling in her bedroom and she goes, yeah, in a dismissive voice and slowly walks over to the door and opens it. I literally shoved her back in the room, whipped around faster than I've ever moved in my life, closed the door and locked it. I explained everything to her, everything I heard. The activity was dying down now, but it was still active enough for her to hear the running upstairs too, at 2.45 am. Another crew would get here at 3, so we got to our station to put their truck away and clock out to go home. Me and my partner huddled together glued to each other's hips, hurried outside to meet with them out in the building parking lot. It's only at this point that we realise that a completely separate crew from around 11pm that night had not only left our truck full of medical equipment and drugs unlocked out in the parking lot in an area known for being not so great, but also left our garage door open, literally giving anyone access to our entire station. Me and my partner are terrified and aren't willing to go back into the station at this point. The crew that's getting off at 3 goes into the station to clock out, and when they come back, they see us hanging out in our truck. They joke with us for a minute over the ghost and make fun of us for sleeping in the truck for the rest of the shift. We ask them if they've ever heard anything, to which the senior on that crew, who has been there for a long time and staunchly believes in the supernatural, says, yeah, it definitely sounds like there's someone walking up there, but he's harmless. Me and my partner are just like, harmless? That thing's not harmless. They leave, and we decided to call for PD, to make sure it wasn't some crackhead that had gotten in while the garage door had been left open. PD get there, and searched very thoroughly and found no evidence of anyone being there. It's 4am, we notify our dispatch the station was cleared to be safe by PD, and together, we venture back inside. We elected to keep the truck in the parking lot, so that we would have to go back to the garage if we got a call or needed to make a quick escape from the demon. And together we huddled together in the living room, with all the lights on, until we got off at 7am. I heard a few minor bumps and bangs, but nothing crazy. Things that could be dismissed as house noises and whatnot, but I barely slept and I'm not looking forward to going back there later this week. After a few days, the activity was nowhere near as crazy as what happened last time, but there was some activity. Most of the shift was perfectly fine. We were busy and out of the station most of the day, and a few times through the night. However, while we were in the station, there was some tension. The air was thick with our own anxiety, and I'm sure this is what caused what I'm about to tell you. For some context, out in the bay there is a cage. It's literally a large metal cage that runs along the back of the garage, and it is where we keep all of our resupply. The door to the cage is supposed to be perpetually locked. This is to prevent crews from going in and messing up company inventory. The only people with keys to the cage are the supervisors, who don't come in until around 7am. I was laying in bed, half awake, half asleep, staring at the ceiling when I heard what sounded like the cage door being intensely rattled by something. It didn't sound like someone was trying to open it. It sounded like someone grabbed a hold of the door and just started shaking it violently. This went on for about a minute. I went to my partner's bedroom to see if she heard it and found that she slept right through it. We sat there for about half an hour listening for it and nothing. At 5.30, I can hear distinct footsteps up in the attic. Nothing crazy like the insane marathon running from the other day, but quiet footsteps nonetheless. My partner says she can't hear them, so I just go back to my room. At 6.30, I can still hear an occasional footstep up there, and to be clear, no one goes up there because it's creepy, and there's nothing up there. Just some old boxes, and an extremely dark attic space. Because I was only hearing footsteps, I decided to go out to the garage and investigate, and when I get into the garage, the footsteps stop. There was no one in there. When I went over to the cage to try and recreate the noise I heard, I found the door was open. I'm not totally convinced that it was just a person opening the cage a bit aggressively. The only problem is that I have no idea who it would be, because as I said, there are only a few people who have a key to the cage and none of them were here and they don't have to get here for a few more hours. I went back inside, 
and I could hear the footsteps upstairs, and now what sounded like in the garage. I tried to record them, but they were too faint to pick up on video. I also want to point out, the crew we met outside the other day was making fun of us for hanging out in the truck. We had made comments about how he likes to do resupply and slam the cage door, though I guess today he just wanted to rattle it. I'm not totally convinced what happened today was a ghost and not a person, but I'm also not totally convinced that it was a person and not a ghost. It was my sixth birthday, and my party had just ended. We had cake, pizza, and played games. Typical American birthday party. I lived with my mom and her boyfriend, his name was Steve, and for my birthday, they got me one of those plastic Fisher-Price playsets. The ones that were like four feet tall and had a small slide, small enough to fit in my room. I was extremely excited about this, because it was exactly what I wanted, and I was sure it was the greatest invention since sliced bread. The playset was set up right by my door in front of my bed. Now before I go on to the actual part of the story you want to hear, I need to give you a little bit of background about the house I lived in, from what I know at least. To begin with, the house was an old blue colonial house in upstate New York. The house was like every other house in the neighborhood, and since Steve had just got a promotion at work, there was constantly work being done on the house. Basically, a complete remodel while we lived there. The only thing I didn't like about the house was that you couldn't get into the attic, and for some reason, bats kept getting in there, and at six years old, you don't like bats. My mum tucked me into bed after my birthday at around 9pm, a little later than usual, and I remember waking up a few times that night because I was really excited to use the playset in the morning. I didn't get to play with it much that day because of the assembly. One of the times I woke up, I remember looking at the playset when I saw two shadows, a boy and a girl, and they looked like they were talking to each other. As a child, I didn't want to be scared, so I rationalized this as the shadows of the trees playing tricks on my mind. That's what my mum would have said. I managed to get back to sleep that night, and didn't really think much of it the next day. My birthday's in June, so I usually didn't have class on my birthday. This meant I could spend the day playing with my friends. I didn't think about the shadows I saw the night before at all. I basically forgot what happened. Until the next night. My usual bedtime was 8pm, and my mum was pretty strict on this matter. So I showered, got dressed, and was in bed. I was lying in bed when I had a strong feeling something was watching me. I looked to the wall between my door and the playset, and the shadows were there again. This time, I paid more attention to it while I was frozen in fear in my bed. The shadow children seemed to be talking, but I still couldn't hear them. It also seemed as if they were looking at each other, but it's hard to sense 3D direction from a 2D shadow. I screamed for my mum, and she ran into my room and turned my light on. At that point, the shadows disappeared. My mum then let me sleep in her bed that night, which she never let me do. She assumed I'd had a nightmare. Every night from then on, when I would look at the wall at night, those shadows would be there. When this would happen, I would call for my mum and the cycle would repeat. During this time, Steve and my mum would argue a lot. I wasn't sure why, but I know I didn't notice it at first. The house had also gone into some full remodeling where almost half of the house would always have something being done to it. I wished for school. This was back when school was fun and all your friends would be there and I hated spending any time in the house and would try to go to my grandma's whenever possible. This cycle repeated for a while, and I'm not really sure what my mum thought about me telling her that ghost shadow people were in my room every night. I begged her to leave the hallway light on every night, hoping that the light would scare away the shadows. She obliged, but the light never did anything, and I would yell for her every night. This continued for a while, but then one night something changed. Laying in bed, something felt different. 
I wasn't sure if I had built up some sort of tolerance to the shadow people that were in my room at night, in the same place, doing nothing but silently talking to each other, or if I was just being dumb. That night, I decided I didn't want to wake my mum up for some reason. I decided I would be brave enough to walk right past the shadows to my mum's room. I think it might be important to remember that whenever my mum would come by these shadows, they would disappear. I still don't know why. I walked past the shadows and nothing happened. I was then in the hallway when the light was right above me and my mum's room was to my left. I remember looking up at the light and then back at my mum's room and then back at the light. I did this a few times and then I remember just staring into the light. I'm not sure why but I was drawn to it. After looking for the light for some reason, I decided I didn't want to wake up my mum which was weird because I never cared before. I went back into bed and the next thing I remember is sitting in the living room watching TV. There was construction all around me and plastic covers on the couches so that none of the drywall or new paint got on them. I remember I was sitting on the floor and I was just watching static on the TV. To me, this memory seems like an out of body experience, like I wasn't even in control. These memories are like a flash to me and I have nothing in between. I only have some more memory of being in that house. I was in my room, looking over my window down to the driveway. It was night time, and my mum had asked her friend's mother to come over. Her name was Danielle, but everyone called her Dee. I also remember watching her pull out of the driveway and giving my mum a hug. I could hear them for some reason, and this also seemed like an out-of-body experience. I hear Dee say there was a boy and girl spirit in the house, but they weren't the problem. The problem was there was a dark and malicious entity that wanted me. Dee and my mum then proceed to burn sage in the house. I assumed I went to bed, but when I woke up I was at my grandma's house, and it was many days after the light incident. I felt fine when I woke up, and I didn't even notice anything different. I often spent the night at my grandma's house. I had my own assumptions about what happened, but I never really talked to my mum about it until I was 16. When I woke up at my grandma's, my mum told me that we were moving out of Steve's house and they were breaking up and that I wouldn't be going back. My mum would collect my things. So as I stated earlier, I spoke to my mum about this in detail when I was older. The memories had bothered me for so long and I wanted answers. I told my mum the exact story that I've just told you and my mum gave me a confused look when I told her about the part with Dee. She told me I wasn't in the house. My mum proceeds to tell me how I became more and more distant as we lived in the house. Then one day we were eating dinner and I just passed out, head in plate like out of a movie. My mum said I had a high fever and looked ill. My mum's the kind of person who believes in the supernatural and I think when I passed out, she decided to accept the ghost stories I was telling her weren't in my head. This is when she decides to call Dee, who was known around town as being a psychic. Dee told my mum immediately to get me out the house and she would come over. My mum drove me to my grandma's and went back to the house when Dee showed up. I wasn't in the house, but was somehow able to recall what Dee had done without my mother ever telling me. My mother also told me she didn't tell Dee anything about what I had just said and that I had just mentioned there was something here. Since I was sick, my grandma kept a close eye on me all night. My grandma doesn't really believe in ghosts, but when I talked to her, she said it was a strange night. I was having trouble sleeping and had a high fever, but then it just stopped. Like one moment, all of my symptoms went away. I went to bed and that's when I remember waking up. And as I share this story with you now, I'm a 21 year old senior in college. Every so often I think back to these events and I'm just confused. I have no answers. I try to come up with my own conclusion, but I could never think of a rational one. I have a hypothesis for what happened, but I won't share that with you now. I want you to come to your own conclusion. Maybe someone else has gone through the same type of thing. That was the point of sharing this. I'm hoping someday someone will hear this and be able to help me. It would be easy to say I was possessed or something, but it seems too unreal. If the memories I have weren't so vivid, it would be hard for me to believe this story. 
I mean, hell, it's hard to believe with the memories I have. But I can assure you, this happened. My wife, a long time ago, used to have night terrors. Some of it may have been due to the fact that she grew up in a legit haunted house. I can testify that stuff went on in her house. Anyhow, her father also owned a turn-of-the-century piano made in 1910. And her mother has all kinds of antique stuff from where her family came to New Mexico in the 1800s. Needless to say, things could have been happening in her house because of all that stuff, or for the fact the previous owner decided to no longer live anymore and took his own life in the basement with exhaust. Well, as time went by, her night terrors continued to get worse, so her mum decided to use the Guatemalan worry dolls and try and help. The premise of the Guatemalan worry dolls is to put them under your pillow and sleep. Afterwards, you place them in a box and bury them on a path you will never go on again. It worked. However, fast forward to right before my daughter was born, my wife and I rented a beautiful house on the hill overlooking the town. About six months into living in the house while cleaning, these Guatemalan worry dolls start showing up in random places. Thresholds of the house, old nooks and crannies, and we weren't entirely sure where they were coming from. Well, my daughter was born and remained in the house for another six months or so. But as we were moving and cleaning out the house, more dolls kept showing up. We packed them all away, and my wife forgot where she put them. As we were moving into a new house, not two or three days in, in the threshold of the front of the house, there was a Guatemalan worry doll laying right there. We'd get rid of old couches and bring in new ones in, and sure enough, lift the couch cushions and voila, worry doll. For a long time, I believed the piano held something in it because we brought it with us to the new house and stuff would always happen. Never in front of me, but definitely behind me, but always in front of my wife or her friends. Lights inadvertently turning on, picture frames swinging on the walls and falling to the ground. Some really funky stuff. I started accepting what was happening when it was in my children's rooms. That got on my nerves. I'd come home when no one else was here and sternly tell whatever it was that it wasn't welcome, reciting the Lord's Prayer in step. We eventually moved the piano out and a lot of things stopped. However, we were telling one of my wife's friends who was very sensitive to this kind of stuff. She was really creeped out. But about three days after she left, she was cleaning out her car and called my wife frantically saying, this is messed up, you're messing with me. My wife was confused as hell. You guessed it, she found a worry doll in her center console. Most recently, my wife found one. The scariest thing to happen was the time my wife and I were stoned watching a Netflix comedy special for John Mulaney. A caption came on telling my wife she was going to die. I thought it was a caption saying like when John Mulaney was born, so I didn't even look at what it said. But later on, my wife told me what it said. I don't know what to do at this point. Honestly, I just like to be free of these cursed dolls. On Memorial Day 2021, about two years ago, I was at an Airbnb with some friends in Iowa. On that trip, I was sitting in a hot tub at night and saw as vividly as the person sitting next to me, an old man in a button-up shirt standing underneath the deck we were near, looking at us. I asked the six people I was with if they could see him as I was shocked and they each said no. I freaked out and sprinted inside. They all thought I was crazy, so did I until I saw him briefly near the woods by the house a few hours later. I haven't seen him since, but some weird stuff's been happening. Shortly after that trip, I had a jar of olives that somehow lost all of their juice overnight. I enjoy the occasional martini, which is why I noticed. There was also a morning where my bathroom sink was running when I woke up. The sink that was running was the faucet that I never turn on 
in a double vanity in an apartment. Shortly after my wife and I moved apartments, nothing to do with that just happened to move. Nothing out of the ordinary happened for about eight months. Then, one night, a glass on her nightstand started spinning, like someone had knocked it into a spin. We tried to recreate it with pillows knocking it over, bumping it, but we couldn't do it. We moved places again into our new home about a month ago. Within the first week of moving, we had a spoon knocked off the counter. Tonight, we had the weirdest experience apart from the ghost I saw this far. We were on our deck, and our basement light turned on by itself. The light is only able to turn on via one switch, and it is not on a timer. After confirming that there was no way me or my wife could have turned it on, I started to clear out the house to make sure no one was in it. When I got to our garage, I was looking in my wife's trunk. I closed the door, turned to my car and looked in the window, and my car alarm went off. I was still about five feet away from it, and there were no loud noises and my keys were upstairs. My alarm had never gone off like that, let alone without anything causing it. At this point, I freaked out beyond belief. If anyone has any idea what this could be or how to deal with it, I'd be extremely grateful. It feels like whatever this is is following me, as I've had very few experiences like this to the point in my life outside of the occasional bump in the attic when I was younger. Moving is definitely not an option, as I'm in my dream home that we just purchased. My cousin Alan passed away at a very young age in 2014. He was only 18 when it happened, and I was 10 at the time, so I didn't quite understand, yet I knew he was no longer with us. He died in a very tragic car accident while not wearing his seatbelt, and his head became mangled in the steering wheel. There were two other people in the car who were wearing seatbelts and survived. Please wear your seatbelts, people. Just to preface, this was on New Year's Eve. He ended up in the ICU while the other passengers had full recoveries. He ended up dying in such a terrible way, and our whole family was obviously distraught. A few days earlier for Christmas, my parents ended up buying me an iPad, and I was so excited. After Alan passed away, we noticed my iPad was very buggy. Every time we spoke to him or mentioned his name, Suddenly, the A key would stick and repetitively type out AAAA, then backspace and delete, like nothing happened. Me and my mum were once in our kitchen, talking about how she wanted to bring it to the Apple store and get it looked at, considering it was a brand new device and worth a lot of money. She didn't want me to end up with a buggy iPad. After we had that single conversation, it never happened again. Also, on many occurrences, our cabinet doors would open in our kitchen. I always knew it was Alan saying hello. Since then, I hadn't had an experience with him until last March. Just so happens that me and his brother were on mushrooms together in the same house he used to live in. We were at the dining table talking about him. Just then, when his name was mentioned, the basement door, only about six feet from us, swung open. Like Alan was joining in our conversation, telling us, I miss you too. Not super creepy but just a little paranormal action from a loved one. I live beside a cemetery, so paranormal experiences aren't really surprising in this circumstance. When I was around the age of nine, my sister was around 12. We shared a bedroom. To give you a bit of an idea, my bed was against one side of the wall and hers was against the other and there was a window between our beds. So one night I woke up, and I turned over to see a dark figure of a woman standing beside the head of my sister's bed. She had medium length hair, a tank top, and a skirt on. It took me a second to realize that she had no legs. I put my pillow over my head for at least a minute, expecting her to be gone. But when I took the pillow off my head, she was still in the same spot. I was completely terrified and began kicking the wall. After a minute or so, my dad got up to check what was going on. 
so he decided that he would sleep in my bed and I would sleep in his with my mum. Eventually I fell asleep and when I woke up the lady was standing beside me and I jumped and moved closer to my mum. Then I saw what looked like a little version of me sitting beside her partially on the bed wearing the exact same clothes that I was wearing at that moment. I also figured out that it was my sister's elementary boyfriend's niece that had passed away a long time ago. A few days later, my sister's boyfriend passed away too.